The longest running scam in MMO history. Continuously serving boldface lies to the public and raking in $500 million from players gambling with rigged statistics and items with 0% drop rates over the course of a decade. And even when they got caught, they still made their escape with nearly all the cash. All from a game that was pivotal in many people's childhoods. Do you also want to make $500 million? Well, just press that subscribe button and it'll be deposited right into your bank account. We promise. Maple Story, released in 2003 in Korea, is one of the longest running MMOs in gaming. The 2D side scrolling RPG is incredibly popular all around the world and is still played to this day. As with many MMOs, one of the things that keeps players engaged is the perpetual grind to min max stats. Whether it's doing quests or rolling for loot in a dungeon, the green sword might fuck you. Oh, fuck me! There are tons of ways for players to get that best in slot item, and many would pay real world money to increase those odds. Fast forward to 2010. Nexon introduces a new item called Cubes into MapleStory. Cubes are a way for players to alter the properties of items they already own to gain a more desirable stat line. On the surface, this seems like a great system. After all, no one wants to run a dungeon over and over again after they've already sunk 10 plus hours into it. So, when they get the right pull, but with the wrong stats, they're faced with a dilemma. Do they spend another 10 hours blindly hoping to roll not only the same item, but the one with the best stats for their class, or do they take the item they've already grinded for and spend some money to do the same thing? Most players would choose that over grinding any day. Unfortunately, cubes weren't all that they seemed. Over time, roll rates were being changed and manipulated without any information communicated to the players, and some were unknowingly paying real-world money for loot with a 0% drop rate. When cubes were first introduced, the drop rate was even among all stats. So when things started off, it was legitimately fair game. But Nexon realized that they could milk players for a little more if they adjusted the odds in their favor. In 2011, they made it so that certain combinations of stats would never show up together. So if you were running a build that needed, for example, strength and dexterity, Nexon would ensure that you'd never actually get it. Which would have been fine if they communicated it openly. Instead, they did the opposite, openly lying by announcing that there was, quote, no change in cube functions. In 2013, they introduced a legendary tier system and black cubes, which had a chance to tear up your weapon. Upon release, Black Cubes had a 1.8% chance of tearing up. Then, over the next three months, Nexon lowered the probability daily, just enough that players wouldn't notice, until it reached 1.4%. Again, nothing was communicated to the players. Finally, in 2016, they nerfed Black Cubes down to 1% flat. And during this time, no one really noticed. I mean, players had an inkling that something was wrong, but there was no definitive proof. But then, in 2019, another scandal broke out. Players began noticing that the stat rules for flames, another way for players to reroll stats, were coming up unevenly. Specifically, certain stats would be paired with each other rather than others more frequently. When asked about it in a complaint ticket, Nexon stated to the public that there was no error in the system and that stat line 1 would not affect stat line 2 or 3. This implied that the stats were distributed completely at random, which wasn't true. In 2021, Korea mandated that all gaming companies disclose loot box rates as a way of combating gambling online. Coinciding with this mandate, Nexon preemptively put out a patch that allegedly equalized the randomness of flames, basically admitting that flames were not evenly distributed before and that Nexon knew about it the whole time. Following the backlash with this patch, MapleStory's director, Kang Wong Ki, put out a statement to try and clarify things, saying that Nexon's idea of random includes uneven distribution of stats, which, dictionary definition of the word random aside, is just plain predatory. This brings us to 2024, when the Korean Fair Trade Commission fined Nexon $9 million for misleading players and violating the country's gambling laws. The claim is specific to the cube system, and Nexon's decision to intentionally withhold information from users between the years of 2010 and 2021. During this time, Nexon put out tons of patch notes about the game, but pretty much always omitted any information regarding changes to roll rates. The conclusion from the Korean FTC is that the company was intentionally misleading its player base by giving them quote, false information. 
But here's where things get especially shady. Not included in the case filed by the FTC are a number of patents held by Nexon which pertain specifically to dynamic RNG manipulation. Here are the patents listed out, detailing the criteria upon which the company can change the RNG of loot boxes on a per player basis. It's important to be clear that these patents are not a part of the case filed by the Korean FTC, but the fact that Nexon holds these patents at all should be off-putting for players. Coupled with the fact that in 2018, Nexon was already fined 875,000 USD for misleading players about loot box rates in Sudden Attack 2, it absolutely feels fishy. So, what was the result of blatantly cheating players? Well, a fine of 11.6 billion won. 11.6 billion won, my guy. Or roughly 8.9 million dollars USD, which should really piss you off. Because as of 2021, Nexon had a total revenue of 480 million USD from cube sales alone. Which, after doing some basic math, is about 471 million dollars in profit. Seriously, it's a joke. Gambling laws are in place for a reason. That they should extend to video games where players are spending real money for virtual items should be no exception. <laughs> and it's something we've explored in a previous video which you can check out here. Nexon's behavior, manipulating their drop rates and lying to players about it, is absolutely grounds for heavy monetary penalties. Many hope that this case will be the first of many and that others will be brought to light and end similar deceptive practices that are targeted at those with addictions to gacha-like reward systems. While $9 million is the highest the Korean FTC has ever fined a game company for loot box manipulation, it still pales in comparison to the nearly 500 million in revenue that Nexon made from this practice. Hopefully, the message is clear to not only Nexon, but other gaming companies around the world. Treat your players fairly, or there will be consequences. Especially in a case like this, where a manipulative practice was left running for decades, who knows what else they could be lying about. Ooh, look at this! <laughs> That's a lot of defense. Oh, what the fuck? What? What the fuck? Wait, what the fuck? Wait, hold on, there's no way! This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. Massive thank you to everyone on this list, and shout out to B, Pass, Retro, Shampoo, and Yashichi for being Platinum supporters. And an extra special shout out to Cloud and Steph for being our Diamond supporters. Wishing you all the best in 2024. If you want to talk to us, check out our Discord. If you want to support our channel and get info on unreleased videos, check out our Patreon. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Jonah, thanks for watching.